So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly, step by step, how easy it was for me to lose 40 pounds in three months. Without counting calories, without having to count how many paces I took every day or downloading apps and, you know, all, none, of, none of that stuff. This is just a good, solid, kick-ass diet and exercise plan with a few tweaks. You know, one of few th key things, I think, that made me successful. So I'm gonna show you step by step exactly how I did it. I'm sharing my results, I'm sharing how I did it, and um, I'm not a professional. I'm not a health professional, so please don't follow my advice before you change your diet or exercise plan. Please go see your doctor or a health professional. That's just a disclaimer I wanna put in here because you never know. Let's begin. So in order to prepare this, um, there is a mental battle that lies ahead. So most of it is going to be mental. And I want to say that, um, you know, this preparation is worthwhile in the beginning. Just to plan out what you're going to do. Just take a, I mean, it doesn't have to take long, take 15 minutes to prepare this, but do it. And everything is, and this will make everything easier down the line. Now, I'm not complaining. I feel great. I feel, you know, more energetic. I feel less sluggish. I feel younger. I feel like I have added, you know, 10 years to my life. And um, so I'm happy I did this. So how did I, how did I, how did I get overcome the stumbling blocks and the hurdles that lay ahead? Well, first of all, I committed. I committed to my plan. And this was after I set a very realistic and measurable goal. Realistic meaning that it's achievable, that I can accomplish it with my abilities. And it's measurable. I had numbers that I was aiming for. So I knew what weight I wanted to reach. I also knew what my measurements were, my waistline that I wanted to, that I wanted to aim for. So all of us know already, you know, you know what you weighed when you were 20. You know what you weighed when you were 30. Yeah, you know, you know what a good weight for you is and what, you, what, your, what your waist size was. Um, just try to turn back the clock to those numbers and that make that your goal. But make it realistic, make it measurable so that you can track where you started, how you progress and where you end. Next, I identified all of the reasons to follow through with this plan. I also came up with and thought of as many reasons as possible not to quit. Now, they may seem the same, but there are some subtle differences between them. And next, I set up reminders for myself. These are reminders to encourage me when I am down. These are reminders to remind me of why I'm doing it when I've forgotten. And it come, it, they may come in different ways. And different uh, flavors, different types, right? So I could, it could be that I had sticky notes on the fridge. It could be posters on a wall of healthy looking people, you know, of what I want to look like myself. It could be other people asking them to remind me when I seem down of why I'm doing this. And it could be, you know, anything that will give you that positive reminding of what the good reasons for following through with your plan and to encourage you. Motivation, encouragement is very important. Next, I planned out a specific strategy for my diet and my exercise plans. Um, a strategy for diet and a strategy for exercise. And I'm going to give you exactly what I did. So just hang on. Now, what I did not do is I did not rely on my plan on willpower. Willpower fluctuates because, you know, you're, we, our, we are not... We are not uh, even keeled all the time and sometimes you're going to feel less uh, encouraged you're going to be discouraged or you're going to feel less motivated or you're just going to be down altogether and this is where you may stumble so willpower is not the way to go the way to go is to fill what you're going to do with things that's not torture you don't want to torture yourself so if you're looking at this as torture you're looking at it the wrong way what you want to look at it, at it as a fun challenge. This is a fun 
project. And you're going to pick activities and foods that are fun for you, that you're going to enjoy, but that are all healthy and adding to your, to your uh, overall health. Um, I used positive reinforcement. I used uh, substitutes that are delicious. I used activities that I enjoy and that I think are fun and that I can look forward to and that um, that I can enjoy with someone that I enjoy. So do it that way. Don't look at it as torture. Do it. Plan it out so that this thing is going to be something you can enjoy. Add a project, you know, and I'm going to show you what I what I did. So. Next, you're going to start. And before you start, you're going to record your measurements. You're going to record your weight. You're going to record your waistline. You're going to record, you know, whatever other measurements you need to record and write them down. This is your starting point. And now you have a starting point and you have a goal. And we're going to, and everything now is, is just filling in between, right? For me, there was a key ingredient. And that is a superfood that I added to my regimen here. To be as a filler and as a substitute and as a snack. Whenever I got tempted to eat ice cream or pizza or fries or hamburger or you know anything that I could not eat or shouldn't have eaten, I had a superfood. This is something really delicious, something easy to make, something readily available that I could munch on and that would fill me up and without kicking me out of my diet plan and um and this is key i'm not going to tell you what it is right now because if i do if i tell you what it is right now i'm going to get off track and it's going to i want to let's go over the plan first and then i'll cover the superfood last so here's my diet plan my plan for the diet was to go on the so-called ketogenic diet and I'm going to I'm going to explain a little bit what the ketogenic diet is very very quickly. This is low carb, high protein, high fat, and this is a variation um, of low carb diets. There are many others like the Atkins diet, the Paleo diet, the Dukan diet, the Carnivore diet, and others. Um, I just chose this one because it seemed to be to me to make the most sense. And the goal of the ketogenic diet um, is to accelerate weight loss accelerate fat burning by entering a state of ketosis and it has a little bit of history this diet was used in the 1920s to um, reduce epileptic seizures in children and um, with success and you can read up about that yourself but it's an it's not a, it's a it's a well-known thing but there's a chemistry there's a biochemistry that happens here that it aids the fat burning process and that's what uh, why i think it's a it's a it's a it's a good way to lose weight quickly and um you enter a state of ketosis and this mean this is measurable uh by measuring uh the the concentration of ketones in your blood and uh, you can do this measurement by uh using urinary test strips in the morning and uh, it's just a strip that changes color, and you can see by the color what the concentrations are. And um, so let's let's just very very briefly: the ketogenic diet induces accelerated weight loss by depriving the body of glucose and forcing it to burn fat for energy. Okay, so this is what we want: we want our bodies to start burning the fat that we don't want the unwanted fat instead of you know the food in our stomachs now after three or four days of low carb intake the body enters the state of ketosis and uses ketones as fuel now what are ketones ketone bodies are produced in liver cells by breaking down fatty acids and ketosis, the level of ketosis, the concentration levels, the time it takes to enter ketosis, all these things varies from individual to individual. And careful dieting will prevent harmful ketone levels. But there is something you want to avoid if you have, particularly if you have type 1 diabetes. Ketoacidosis is a dangerous condition caused by excessive ketone buildup in the blood. It often occurs in people with type 1 diabetes when they go on low-carb diets due to insulin deficiency. But this can rarely happen in non-diabetics or on very low-carb diets. 
So hopefully you're not you're not uh, uh, susceptible to this. But again, it's always a good idea to talk to your doctor before you tackle a new diet or something uh, pretty radical like the ketogenic diet. Now, when you go on the ketogenic diet, you probably do want to do a little bit of research and study what kind of foods are keto-friendly. Keto-friendly meaning that it's going to maintain ketosis for you and it's not going to kick you out of ketosis. Uh, ketosis, like we said in a previous slide, it takes about three or four days. Once you start limiting your carbs, it will take three or four days to enter into ketosis. So it's, 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 it's difficult. It takes a while. And in that, in that three and four days, you cannot cheat. If you cheat, <laughs> you're not gonna, you start over. You start from scratch. Right? So, so you have to be very uh, disciplined to enter ketosis. This is really important. This is why the superfood is important. This is why the superfood is important because that discipline, maintaining that discipline is hard. This is the hardest thing you're going to do. Um, you are going to be tem tempted several times a day to, do, to eat something or to, or to drink something or to take something that, or just to taste something that is easily going to kick you out of ketosis. So let's look at keto-friendly foods. Um, you are obviously aiming for low carb diet, for low carb foods, and this is seriously low carb. I mean seriously, because you're going to cut out all sugar, sucrose, fructose, starch, grains. Meaning you're not going to eat any bread, no potatoes, no pasta, no rice, no baked goods, no grains. Even starchy vegetables and fruits are going to be off the table. Okay, so instead. You're going to go for proteins. And this is great for me because I love protein food. Um, I love beef. I like fish. I enjoy chicken. I like pork. I enjoyed cottage cheese. It is a um, high, rich in protein uh, food and eggs. And remember, it's also a high fat diet. So you don't have to be too concerned about the fat content in these foods. Again, talk to your doctor before you take my advice. Now, avoid keto-friendly processed foods. This is my personal advice. I haven't read this anywhere in, a, in, a, in an article or anything. But in the super, if you go to the supermarket these days and you look for keto-friendly, you'll see a lot, of, a lot of processed foods, you know, packets of things that are marked as keto-friendly, like Keto-friendly ice cream, keto-friendly pasta, keto-friendly bread, keto-friendly chips, and keto-friendly candy, and keto-friendly chocolate, right? But all of these items are substitutes. In other words, they are chemically and processed and flavored in order to taste like something that they're not really. That they're not really. It's a plastic food. And um, I don't care what they say on the packet. If you look at the ingredients, you're going to see long chemical names and that you don't recognize. And when you see those long chemical names, um, you probably want to avoid it because these are chemicals that's used to color things. It's chemicals to use to preserve things. It's chemicals to use to flavor things and so on and so on and so on. And um, it's, just, it's, it's just not healthy. It's probably going to kick you out of ketosis. It's so much work to try to study which of these chemicals are healthy and which not. Uh, it's, who can I trust? I, stay away. It's not as healthy. There are enough healthy, readily available natural foods out there. Not to mention that these keto-friendly substitutes, these processed substitute foods, are also pretty expensive. These are just... These are, these are, Basically, these are things to make money off of people who want to go on keto diets, right? And um, so, stay away. As far as fruits and veggies, uh, you also do a, must do a little bit of research. So, here's just a summary of what I um, often used. And this is just my uh, the vegetables and fruits that I used. Vegetables, broccoli yellow squash, zucchini, bell peppers, celery, Brussels sprouts, spinach, and white mushrooms. 
And these are the ones that I commonly bought and that I cooked. Now, if you are already saying, oh, cooking vegetables, I'm not a chef and I don't know how to cook vegetables. Uh, hang on, hang on. I'm going to show you how easy this is and um, it's not difficult. So it's going to take you just a few minutes. So hang on. Now, what about fruits? Keto-friendly fruits are avocados. These are very rich in nutrients and and um, so you want to eat some avocado. And then you can eat berries like strawberries, um, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, watermelon, cantaloupe, peaches, and tomatoes. But when it comes to fruits, you want to use small portions at a time, right? Just like, not a, obviously not a whole watermelon. But... Um, <laughs> But don't overdo it because they will. They do contain uh, uh, carbohydrates, and they will kick you out of out of ketosis if you eat too much. So don't overdo it on this stuff. Limit it. You want to avoid a lot of common um, vegetables and and uh, fruits like apples and pears. They have they have too much starch in them. Uh, carrots, bananas, corn, sweet corn, pineapples, grapes, cherries. You need to stay away from, unfortunately. And there's a longer list of this. I'm. <clears throat> these are just things that I like to eat that uh, that I had to avoid. So you you need to you need to study whether you know there's something else that you like, whether you can eat it or not. Now my meal plan was very simple. I'm a South African, and so we eat a lot of meat, and so I have a gas grill, and I use that all the time to cook steaks and sausages and fish and chicken and and pork and um so i just continue doing that so here's what i cooked i cooked new york strip steaks ribeye steaks italian sausage south african sausage hamburger patties uh chicken salmon i cook i, I cook trout i cooked pork ribs i don't have it on the list there but i cooked that as well uh all delicious stuff now, what I did not do is I put I don't put barbecue sauce on it, you know, honey barbecue sauce, all these things. Again, they contain sugar. They'll kick you out of out of ketosis. I don't put that on. But herbs and spices as much as you like. Air fryer. I used an air fryer to cook chicken wings and make my own chicken wings. Chicken wings, chicken breasts, chicken drumsticks. Another thing that the air fryer is good for is um, you know, if it's raining, you can't cook outside, or and you or you just want a quick meal and you want to get some veggies in, then buy a packet of frozen, chopped up stir-fry vegetables in the supermarket. You know, just regular vegetables, chopped up. They call it stir-fry, but it's, it's, there's nothing in it except vegetables. And um, make sure it's the right kind of vegetables, and throw that in your air fryer, and you, can, and you just have a very quick meal. You don't have to do the chopping yourself. You can just buy chopped in advance. Then I uh, use a slow cooker for a lot of food. For a lot of meals and this is really really easy now you can buy the 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 the, the vegetables pre-cut and pre-chopped for you but it's cheaper to just buy the vegetables fresh and you know spend five minutes just chopping them up it it doesn't take long at all so one clump of broccoli you cut off the stems throw it in the in a, in, in a slow cooker um, i would take one zucchini and chop it up and throw it in there or uh, a yellow squash there's not enough room in a cook, slow cooker for a lot of different things so you have to you you learn quickly how, how much you, you can buy to fill it up then i would chop up you know mushrooms throw them in there i would one garlic clove chop that up fine chopped and throw that in there maybe a few one stick of celery that i would chop up um, i would put in some some ground beef uh, and the ground beef, I just cut these with a knife into fairly large pieces, you know, like um, meatballs, and throw them in there. And, you know, give put some garlic salt, some chili pepper, or some cayenne pepper uh, on top of it all. And if there's any room left, then I would fill it up, fill the pot up with, stir, with, with frozen stir-fry vegetables, right? And then fill it up with water, to about an inch below the brim, turn it on high, leave it for three and a half to four hours, and by the time it's done, you have 
meals lasting you two days, maybe even three days, two and a half days is typical for me. And so when it's cooled down, you can put it in the fridge and just take it out and heat it up in a microwave. And you've got a full meal. And you can eat as much of that as you want because it's, it's just going to um, fill you up, but it's not going to kick you out of ketosis very easily. Then for a break, you know, for other types of foods, I had eggs, uh, yogurt, Greek and plain yogurt, not sugared yogurt, cottage cheese, nuts. Um, but again, these things you have to portion out. Be careful you don't eat too much of that. And then my superfood. So to, and this superfood will address any hunger pangs and cravings and be a filler. And this is absolutely, this was absolutely essential for me. And again, I make my food delicious. Whatever I do, I'm going to make it delicious. I'm going to watch my sodium level so I don't over salt and get my blood pressure up. And I am, of course, um, supplementing with, um, you know, vitamins and, you know, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin B2, um, potassium, magnesium, and um, calcium. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm supplementing with, with, vitamins and so on definitely i want to keep i want to make my food as, as as delicious as possible so i want to look forward to eating it and i also want to look forward to making it so making it if, if making it takes a long time i'm not going to want to do it but if it's easy yeah why not okay so my exercise plan let's get to that was very simple um i exercised six days a week rested one day and every day i just exercised no less than 20 minutes a day so of those six days. So 20 minutes a day for six days with on Sundays typically I would rest. And um, at least five minutes of cardiovascular exercise during those days. So this means, cardiovascular means I'm going to get my heart rate up, I'm going to get my breathing up, I'm going to work up a sweat. I'm going to really exercise and make work up a sweat. And I'm not going to play, right? I'm going to I'm going to use enough weight to that my muscles are going to ache, but I'm not going to overdo it so I can break, you know, tear tear a muscle or something. <laughs> you know, when you when you reach my age, you can't do that anymore. So um, also, I focused on making sure that my my large muscle groups got exercise. These are, you know, your back muscles, your stomach muscles, your quads, in your legs particularly the quads. The quads are the biggest muscles. And so if you want to burn fat, you want to um, exercise those model muscles to burn calories. Now, I what I did for my exercises is some days I went swimming and then sw swam laps in a pool while I was playing with my son. But most days I went into my basement and I have a small home gym there and I just did some weights and some rowing. And... Um, this worked fine for 20 minutes, I mean, and six days a week. Now, I'm not a proponent of saying you have to do what I did. And this is the exercises. This is, these are the exercises. No, pick something that you're going to enjoy. Pick something that's convenient for you in the neighborhood that you live, for your lifestyle, <clears throat> your, to your liking. Whether it's walking, <clears throat> excuse me, walking or hiking or biking, stationary biking or actual, you know, Biking outside, and just not motorbiking. That's not exercise, believe it or not. I love motorbiking, and it feels like exercise, but it's not. It's lazy. Rowing, uh, it's a, you know, canoeing or, or kayaking. Floor exercises, uh, or what is it, TV exercises, those kinds of things. Yeah, to do that. Stair climbing. Now, tennis and jogging and running and these kinds of things, um, I did not do. And that, you know, when, you, when you're over at 50, I think it's probably best not to strain your joints, knees, hips, ankles, um, and also wrists and, th and elbows and things and shoulders, because they, they, they are wearing out. And um, so, so I'm not a big fan of, of exercises that are going to strain the joints. I, I, have, I tend to avoid those. But, you know, pick exercises if you want to do something and I, and I think, you know, whatever plan, whatever diet you pick, when you, if you do want to lose weight, if you want to, you know, get into the green, you know, but looking at your BMI, if, if, you, if you look up your BMI and you see you're in the obese range, which is where I was, 
and you want to get into the green healthy range, then um, why make it torture? Pick things that you're going to enjoy. You know, pick some, pick a partner for something, and if if you can, and that who also wants to do it with you, and go and enjoy it with them. But look forward to doing this. Don't look at it as torture. If it's torture, um, it's it's going to be harder. So motivate yourself and change your mindset to 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 and pick things that are going to be easy for you. All right. So now it's time to talk about the superfood biltong. Biltong is a dried meat, and it's traditional in South Africa. It's not jerky, so. It's air dried meat, it's not jerky. Jerky is different because jerky is cooked and smoked meat and then dried. It biltong is not cooked and not smoked. You can smoke it. Sometimes people do that, but it's not cooked. It is delicious in taste and texture. It's also not, you know, it's not minced. It's clean muscle meat. And um it's been in South Africa a tradition for hundreds of years. My own family um, has been making biltong for, you know, maybe th since the 1700s, so, so 300 years. In South Africa, it's been for hundreds of years. I've been making for, for decades biltong. And um, if you ever meet a South African who does not eat biltong or doesn't know biltong or doesn't like biltong, and don't trust that person. Uh, that's uh, that's scary. So um, the reason biltong is a superfood is because it is a high density protein. Of course, it's a meat. It's a dried meat. So as you dry it, you increase the density of it. It doesn't lose its 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 nutritional content, but it increases the density of it, which means when you eat it. That dried meat is going to absorb the moisture and it's become it's going to fill you up as well. So it's a fantastic snack to as a filler, and um, it's also healthy. It does unlike jerky. Jerky contains a lot of nitrates and preservatives and gluten. Um, in biltong, you're not going to find any of that. No glutens, no no preservatives, no nitrates, no chemicals. Just meat and it has a long storage life so you can basically um you know cut up some biltong or just have a piece throw it in a bag throw it in your drawer and when you're hungry you know eat some of it and um you can eat it you know next week next month and you'll be fine um not that the stuff can last that long because it's so delicious that you don't store the stuff for very very long where can you find biltong? You can buy biltong on Amazon, on the internet. You can buy it at, uh, I think Walmart ca has been carrying it. Kroger has been carrying it. You know, supermarkets have been carrying LDs. Um, I've seen biltong at LDs. But it's it's super expensive. Biltong is super expensive because it's such a high quality um, cured meat. And um, it's easier and quicker and much more fun just to make it yourself. So um, it's quick and easy to prepare. It takes a while to dry, but the actual human effort to make it, to prepare it, is nothing, okay? If you are comfortable slicing some meat with a, with a sharp knife and doing a marinade, then you can do this. That's all you need to do, is just slice, slice meat and marinate it, and, um, and then you are good. And that... Along with cleanup, takes five, ten minutes for five pounds, and that's my method. I will show you in a video how I do that. Um, I I do that all the time. I take less than five minutes, uh, less than ten minutes to make five pounds of biltong. And I have in my dryer. I use my dryer like a conveyor belt, so I will make two and a half pounds or five pounds at a time, and then I would put it in the dryer, and all the other meat move up. So meat that are the driest are taken out. And usually I don't have to take out any meat because I've already eaten enough that when I put meat in, you know, I just shift the other meat up. But 
So, so I always have a supply of really of, of dried biltong, always. And um, I just keep adding in one end and taking out the other end. So that works fantastic. And um, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but cleanup is a breeze. There is virtually no cleanup. The only cleanup you really have with my method is your knife and your cutting board. Um, other than that, there's really nothing. There's nothing to clean. So how easy is that? You just, you know, wash off a, a cutting board and wash a knife. Easy. So um, really no excuse. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but it's delicious. Taste and texture is absolutely to marvel for. And um, the problem with biltong is that other people want to eat it. Uh, when you make biltong, it tends to disappear, and other people tend to steal it and eat it. And when you get there, it is less than what you were looking for or that you expected. And sometimes you're the culprit. Sometimes you're the one that eats that eats too much of it. So, but it fits in so well with a ketogenic diet that you can use this. You can keep keep this in a car, keep it you know in your office, keep it around. And when you are when you have a craving. Pull out some building, whether it's ice cream, whether it's chocolate, whether it, whatever it is. So in conclusion, I just have a few remarks. One is that, and I think this is quite important, is I believe in this. I have no, you know, academic backup. I haven't read any journal articles to back up this statement. But I, I, my, my personal recommendation for me was to avoid prolonged ketosis. And um, <clears throat> not to prolong it beyond a week. I don't think it's healthy. I don't think it's healthy to stay in ketosis for a long time. Um, <clears throat> I could be wrong, but I think it strains the body. And um, so I, my results speak for themselves. I don't think you need to prolong ketosis. But I think, I think it's healthier not to prolong it past a week. <clears throat> so once a week or once in two weeks, I think you need to get out of ketosis. And that's what I did. Um, also, people complain, and I've, I've read that there are um, is a lot of instances where people say they experience constipation uh, from the ketogenic diet. I did not experience that, but I didn't stay in ketosis for very long times, right? So my, my rhythm was weekly of entering and exiting ketosis, and that seemed to work best for me. So on a, on a Sunday, I would not do my exercises. And I would also have a cheat meal or a reward meal. I would reward myself with a cheat meal. Uh, you know, have a share a pizza with my son, or share an ice cream, or you know, eat a, eat a hamburger and fries, or you know, something like that. But that I think is is good. Kicks you out of ketosis, and it takes another two or three days to get back into ketosis, and that seemed to work fine. But biltong was really the key to my success. Previously, on previous attempts with the ketogenic diet, I could not follow through. And it was because I didn't fully mentally prepare myself to make it fun. And biltong wasn't part of it. Biltong was not. I didn't have biltong as the correct uh, filler. Now, I want to say something about biltong. There is one thing you need to be careful about, and that is overdoing the salt. Um, you don't want to um, you don't want to increase your salt levels um, too much because that could raise your blood pressure. And you need to get potassium as a supplement, and that will stabilize and neutralize uh, sodium levels. But um, but when you make biltong, pay attention that you don't overdo it with the salt. I also in my biltong setup. Like I mentioned, I have the conveyor belt set up. So, you know, I, fresh meat comes in one end, dry meat comes out the other end, and the dry, dried meat had been in there for, you know, six days or seven days. So, so that works well for me. And that's it. I don't think I have anything more to say at this point. Um, I hope that was beneficial to you. And, uh, you know, that's, that's my story. That's how I lost 40 pounds. I'm still on the diet. I'm still doing all these things. I haven't stopped and I think I can probably continue this for 
was for some time. I think you know what, when when will it when will I inter when, what will interrupt it? it? It'll get interrupted if I get sick, or if you know something I have to go away, or or something happens you know where I can't get to all the things that I have to do, and something interrupts in life, and that kind of thing happens. But uh, if that happens, then I'll just get right back into it uh, as soon as I can. So thanks for watching. See you next time.